Section 1. The first impression. Why your section introductions matter. Have you ever started reading something and immediately felt lost? Like you walked into a conversation already in progress? That's what a bad introduction can feel like. It's like starting a road trip without a map. Frustrating, right? Now imagine the opposite. You open a book, and the first line pulls you in. You're hooked. You can't wait to see where this story takes you. That's the power of a strong introduction. It sets the stage, piques your curiosity, and makes you want to keep reading. But here's the thing. It's not just about the very beginning of your piece. Every section, every new idea, needs its own mini introduction. Think of them as little bridges, guiding your reader smoothly from one thought to the next. Why is this so important? Because readers need those little pauses, those moments to catch their breath and reorient themselves. Without them, they get lost in the weeds. So how do we build these bridges? Let's dive in. Section 2. Setting the stage crafting introductions that shine. Welcome to this journey where we delve into the art of creating introductions that captivate and engage. So we know introductions are important, but what makes a good one? It's not just about starting a conversation. It's about setting the tone and inviting your reader into your world. Think of it like setting the table for a delicious meal. You want everything to be just right. Creating an atmosphere that makes your guests feel welcome and excited for what's to come. You wouldn't just throw the food on a bare table, would you? A haphazard approach can leave your guests feeling unappreciated and uninterested. Instead, you'd set the scene, lay out the silverware, maybe light a candle. This attention to detail shows care and thoughtfulness, making your guests feel valued. The same goes for your writing. A well-crafted introduction sets the stage for your reader, inviting them into your narrative with a sense of anticipation. You want to create an inviting space for your reader. This means being clear, engaging, and setting the right tone from the very beginning. Start by reminding them where they are in the larger conversation. Context is key. It helps your reader understand the relevance of your topic. What's the main point you're trying to make? Clarify your purpose early on to keep your reader focused and engaged. Once you've set the context, it's time to introduce the specific topic of this section. This is where you narrow down your focus and guide your reader to the heart of your message. What new idea are you exploring? Introduce it with clarity and enthusiasm, sparking curiosity and interest. What question are you trying to answer? Pose it in a way that invites your reader to think and engage with your content. For example, you might write, now that we've explored the importance of clear writing, let's dive into the art of crafting compelling introductions. See how that works. It seamlessly transitions your reader to the next topic. You've gently guided your reader to the next stop on their journey. This approach keeps them engaged and eager to learn more. But we can do even better than that. We can create introductions that not only inform, but also inspire and motivate. We can actively engage our readers and make them feel like active participants in the conversation. This means using language that is inclusive and inviting. And how do we do that? By asking questions that provoke thought and invite dialogue. You guessed it by asking questions. Questions are powerful tools that can transform a passive reader into an active participant, making your writing more dynamic and engaging. Section 3. The Power of Inquiry. Engaging your readers with questions. Remember being a kid and driving your parents crazy with endless why questions. Those moments of relentless curiosity were not just a phase. They were a fundamental part of how we learn and engage with the world around us. Well, it turns out that curiosity is a powerful tool, even in writing. When we harness the power of questions, we can transform a passive reading experience into an active exploration. By asking questions, we invite our readers to think critically and come up with their own answers. This not only makes the content more engaging, but also more memorable. But not all questions are created equal. The type of questions we ask can significantly impact the level of engagement we achieve. A simple yes or no question won't cut it. These types of questions often lead to dead ends and don't encourage deeper thinking. We want questions that spark curiosity, questions that make people pause and ponder. These are the questions that lead to richer, more meaningful interactions. For instance, instead of asking, do you think introductions are important? Which can be answered with a simple yes or no, try something more thought-provoking. Try asking, what's the most captivating introduction you've ever read? And why do you think it's stuck with you? See the difference? This question encourages readers to recall a specific experience and analyze what made it so memorable. The second question encourages readers to recall a specific experience and analyze what made it so memorable. 
It invites them to share a part of their personal journey, making the interaction more intimate and engaging. It's a subtle shift, but it can make all the difference in terms of engagement. When readers feel that their input is valued, they are more likely to invest their time and thoughts into the content. Now, here's the crucial part. Don't leave your readers hanging. After posing a question, take the time to answer it yourself. This not only provides a model for how to think about the question, but also shows that you are willing to engage in the dialogue. After posing a question, take the time to answer it yourself. Share your own thoughts and experiences. This creates a sense of reciprocity and shows that you are not just throwing questions into the void. You're genuinely interested in exploring these ideas with them. Share your own thoughts and experiences. This not only enriches the content, but also builds a connection with your readers. They get to see your perspective and understand your thought process. This shows your readers that you're not just throwing questions into the void, you're genuinely interested in exploring these ideas with them. It creates a sense of community and shared exploration. And once you've shared your perspective, why not invite your readers to do the same? Encourage them to share their thoughts in the comments or on social media. This not only increases engagement, but also fosters a sense of community. Encourage them to share their thoughts in the comments or on social media. This opens up a space for dialogue and allows readers to feel that their voices are heard and valued. After all, writing shouldn't be a one-way street. It's about creating a dialogue, a shared experience between writer and reader. When readers feel that they are part of the conversation, they are more likely to stay engaged and come back for more. It's about creating a dialogue, a shared experience between writer and reader. This two-way interaction not only enriches the content, but also builds a loyal readership. When readers feel that their input is valued, they are more likely to invest their time and thoughts into the content. So, the next time you sit down to write, think about the questions you can ask your readers. Make them thought-provoking and engaging. And don't forget to share your own answers and invite your readers to do the same. This approach will not only make your writing more engaging, but also create a sense of community and shared exploration. Remember the goal is to create a dialogue, a shared experience between writer and reader. When readers feel that they are part of the conversation, they are more likely to stay engaged and come back for more. So go ahead and start asking those questions. You'll be amazed at how much more engaging your writing can become. And remember, the power of inquiry is not just about asking questions, it's about creating a space for dialogue and exploration. So keep asking, keep engaging, and keep exploring happy writing. Section four, calls to action, turning readers into participants. We've talked about the power of questions, but there's another tool we can use to boost engagement calls to action. A call to action is simply an invitation for your reader to do something specific. This could be anything from leaving a comment to sharing the article on social media to signing up for your newsletter. The key is to be clear, concise, and make it easy for your reader to take action. For example, instead of ending a section with a period, try something like, what are your thoughts on using questions to engage readers? Share your experiences in the comments below. See how that works. You've given your reader a clear instruction and a reason to engage with your content. And the more engaged your readers are, the more likely they are to stick around and keep reading. But calls to action aren't just about getting people to click buttons. They're about fostering a sense of community, of shared purpose. When you invite your readers to participate, you're telling them that their voices matter, that their opinions are valued, and that can make all the difference in building a loyal and engaged audience. Now, let's delve deeper into why calls to action are so effective. When you prompt your readers to take action, you're not just increasing engagement, you're also gathering valuable feedback. This feedback can help you understand what resonates with your audience, what they care about, and what they want more of. By analyzing this feedback 